Hello, Maris. How are you? Hello, hello. Hello, Maris. Hello. Oh. Hello, teacher. Oh, yes, you are in a meeting. O sea, en una reunión. Hasta ahorita estoy viendo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank Me you. Estaré oyente. Okay, thank you. All right, so we also have Carla Sofia, we have Pablo, and we also have Vladimir. Okay, guys, how are you? How do you feel? What about your day? How was it? How was your day, Vladimir? Is Vladimir there? Good evening, teacher. My day was uh, very busy because I had two, two meetings. Two meetings? Uh, with General Ma. Oh. Um, okay. Can you hear me, guys? ¿Me escuchan? Hello. Sí, creo que sí. Creo que, yes. No sé si a mí es que mi internet está mal o sería el de Vladimir. Ok. Yes. Okay. Es no sé si... mí. Ah, ok. Sí, es que se, se cortó por un momento la de mí. Okay. But thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I heard that you had a meeting. Ok. Two meetings, actually. Ok. All right, guys. So we're going to start with today's class and today we have different activities that we are going to cover, okay? We have many things that we need to cover today. So we are going to start with the warm up and we are going to continue with unit three. And today we are going to talk about modal verbs in the past. So I need you to please pay attention and if you have questions, please ask. Okay, we also have a speaking time and we have grammar quizzes and listening quizzes. Okay, but first we are going to start with the warm up. And today we are going to start with the following, guys. Vamos a hacer un repaso about the comparative adjectives and superlatives. Okay, vamos a hacer un repaso. Okay, so let's see. We have number one. Swimming with someone else is comparative, okay, comparative. Swimming with someone else is no, swimming with someone else is safer than swimming on your own. Yeah. What about number two? After I had done some housework, the house looked compact. Cleaner than. Excellent. Cleaner than. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The hotel is a space in the summer, a space in the spring. Uh -huh. Adjective full. Fuller. Okay. Fuller than. The hotel is fuller in the summer than in the spring. Yeah, let's move to the other examples in sentences. Okay, what about this one? I am usually optimistic is the adjective. Mm -hmm. I am usually more oh. optimistic. Excellent. So I am usually more optimistic than my friend. She worries a lot about things. Perfect. 
What about this one? My sister has been trying to eat less because she wants to be thinner. Thinner than me. Okay, let's see this one. The bus station is a space from my house. A space, the train station. Comparative of far. Mm -hmm. Comparative. No? So the bus station, this one, guys, remember that is one of the of the main uh, irregular adjectives. The bus station is farther from my house than the train station. Uh -huh. What about this one? Your photos of our holiday are comparative. Better. Better than mine. Perfect. Better than mine. Excellent. Okay. So let's see. Um, okay. Let's do this one. I think my diet is uh -huh. Comparative, which is the comparative of that? Healthier. Okay, healthier. Healthier than, okay? Yes, I think my diet is healthier than my brother's. I eat lots of fruit. Yeah, so now let's move to this one. The river Thames is... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comparative. Yes. Mm, the comparative no. of long? Comparative. Ah, longer. Longer. longer than. Excellent. Longer than. Very good, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about this one? The houses by the sea, the houses by the sea are. The houses by the sea are adjective colorful. More colorful than. Excellent. More colorful than. Perfect. All right. So now let's see the last one for comparatives. Okay. La última para los comparativos. Um, okay. This one. All right. Italian is. Easier. easier for Spanish students than it is for English students. Correct. Easier than, okay? And that is correct, guys. Italian is easy, okay? For Spanish, for us, for Spanish students, right? In this case, uh, for, for the ones that actually know Spanish, okay? It is easier for the people that... Uh, no Spanish, yeah? Now, okay, let's move to superlatives. Superlatives. Those were comparatives. Those are superlatives, okay? Let's move. So Everest is... The highest mountain. The highest, yes, the highest. Excellent, okay? This dress superlative. The chips. This dress is the chips. 
the cheapest. Good. Cheapest, cheapest. Cheapest, okay. What about this one? Who is superlative of old? The oldest. The oldest person in your family. Perfect, okay. All right, next. Which language is superlative? The easy, isn't the easiest. The easiest, okay. What about this one? The book is. Mm -hmm. This book is the most serious. serious. The most serious. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, this one. London is the biggest city. The biggest. Excellent. The biggest. Okay. This juice is this juice. Is uh -huh. the most delicious. The most delicious. Okay. Very good. The last one. Okay. The last one. Um, this one. This is the most comfortable. The most comfortable hotel in my town. Perfect. Okay. So you see, very easy, okay? It was easy. Don't forget about superlatives and don't forget about comparatives, yeah? Don't forget about that. Let's move. And we are going to start by reading, yeah? We are going to read some short emails, yeah? So let's see. Um, okay, I need two volunteers, two volunteers that read the text one, well, the first one takes one, and then we have text two. So I need two volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yes, who wants to read? Me? No. Okay, thank you. All right, Carla, please read text one. Dear Anita, I want to tell you about my country. Thailand is often called the land of smiles because the people are very polite. Families live together. I live with my parents, brothers, grandparents, and one aunt. I have many cousins and they come to my house very often. Uh, tourists love Thailand for the beautiful nature, warm, warm weather, yes, and the food. I think Thai food is the best in the world. My favorite dish is pad Thai, yes, fried noodles, yes, and Tong Jong Kung, screen south with lemon okay we had fresh vegetables and fruit all year round i love traditional music and dance and elephants mm -hmm. please tell me about norway is it really cold lots of love Gusama. okay thank you all right First of all, we are going to focus on pronunciation, okay? So the first thing is this one, uh, this verb, all right? Cold, cold, yeah? Then we also have um, this one, which is ant, ant, ant. ant, yes. Then we also have this one, parents. Mm, parents. Parents, okay, como, como con una e, parents, yeah. The same happens with this one, grandparents. Parents. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we also have uh, this one, nature. 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 Very good. And we also have shrimp. Oh, como shrimp. 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 Excellent. Like that. Okay. Very good. So let me ask you guys, what countries do they write about? Which countries are mentioned on this reading? Yeah. Which countries? Uh -huh. Thailand. Thailand and? Norway. Norway. Okay, very good. So now let's move to reading two. All right, let's move to text number two. Okay, so I need one volunteer to read this. Uh -huh. Who wants to read text number two? Okay, thank you. Go. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there, Busama. Kenya is a big country. We have mountains, the sea, and the, a lot of national parks. I have never seen the sea. I live in a small village near the Macy Mara Park. My family are Messi. So I speak ma, yeah. but also swing and English. There are many languages in Kenya, so everybody learns show and English to communicate. The Maasai people are tall and handsome, and they wear colorful clothes. For Maasai people, the most important animal is the cow, but yeah. we also have many wild animals in Kenya. Okay. There are lions, giraffes, zebras, buffaloes, hippos, elephants, and rhinos. Tourists often come here to safaris. They don't kill the animals, of course. They just take hundreds of photos. I love beer, and my favorite dish is matok and banana flourish. Please write to me about Thailand. Your Africa friends, Gati. Gatimo. Gatimo, perfect, Gatimo. okay. Thank you, all right? So just pronunciation, village. 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 Yeah, and this one, wild. Wild, wild. And probably rhinos. Yeah, rhinos. Repeat, rhinos. 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 Yeah. Rhinos. Okay. Mm, okay. Then the other part was perfect, right? So let's see. Let me ask you: true or false? Busama has a small family. Mm -hmm. What do you think? According to this reading. Uh -huh. True or false? Uh -huh. Busama has a small family. True or false? False. False. Okay. She likes Thai food. True or false? Uh -huh. yeah, false. False. Okay. Thai food. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And there are giraffes in Thailand. True or false? Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. 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 No, true, true. <laughs> true, okay. We have it right there. Mm hmm Okay. What about number four? Gatimu lives near the sea. Mm -hmm. Falls. Uh -huh. Okay. What about the number five? He speaks three languages. Falls. Falls. Okay. How many languages does he speak? Swahili and English. Okay. Mm, but it says, my family are Maasai. So I speak Ma, but also Swahili and English. So, three. Um, mm -hmm. yes, three. Three, right? Exactly. All right. And number six. Tourists come to Kenya to look at wild animals. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think that tourists come to Kenya to look at wild animals? True or false? True. 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 That is correct, guys. Okay, very good. All right, so now let's move. Let's move and let's start with speaking, okay? So you are going to move to a different room and you are going to practice with your partner. So we have three questions. So, right, I'll give you around five minutes from five to eight minutes for you to practice those three questions. Yeah, the first one is going to be which websites do you use the most and what do you like most about them? Yeah, you need to talk about your favorite websites. Yeah, if it is um, social networks, right, or if you look for probably. Um, movies, right, or a PDF, right, etc. Websites, okay, websites that you like to visit and why those are really useful for you. And number two, where would you like to go on your next holiday? So that means next week, right, because we have our next holiday this coming week. And number three, what was your first job? Yeah. I need to talk about your first job. So I need to use simple past. Okay. And then we are going to come back to a start with the book. Right. So, but right now we are going to practice a speaking. Okay. Um, open the class. Open the class. And let me give you also. Um, permission for you to share the screen okay so we are going to practice all right guys and um, if you cannot participate on the speaking with your partner please stay in the main room okay so let me see You came back, Carla. No, no nadie. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was nobody. Okay, let me see. Espérame, la voy a mover, okay? 
in Carla. Okay. There. Let's see. Okay. So question number one, which websites do you use the most? Um, I, the website that I use every day um, are YouTube, Netflix, and Dilt. Dilt Translator. Dilt, Dilt Translator. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and what do you like most about them? Um, okay, Netflix, Netflix you, I think, is obviously. <laughs> yeah, Netflix because um, I uh, for entertainment. <laughs> and yeah. YouTube, uh, when I have, oh, I need to find something and specific. Yeah. And, Deal for, for uh, by for the class <laughs> and and when I read something in English and I don't I don't understand everything. Okay, okay. In my case, um, I usually use uh in my in my job the e banking platforms. Um, I use my my email yes. uh, for entertainment. Um, I don't have Netflix account account. Sorry, but but I see the but I watch the series on HBO Max. Yes, uh, <laughs> and 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 the last one I think Spotify. Because oh, I like yeah. music. <laughs> yes, I I usually use the Spotify too. Yeah, okay. Okay. Next, where would you like to go on your next holiday? Uh, I don't know. I think um, I want to go <laughs> on many places, but I think that. Um, I will stay in my home, just. Oh, really? Yes. Do you have any plan? No. <laughs> okay. Um, I I I say uh, and a friend. Maybe one month early, but she never <laughs> answered me, so we don't have plan any plans. Okay. 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 Uh, well, in my case, <clears throat> uh, I would like to go uh, to the beach, but I prefer I prefer to go uh, to the mountains. Uh, yes, I love to. Yeah. Yeah. I would like. I would like. Okay. And the last one. What was your first job? Um, as professional, my first job was in a construction office, or I think, creo que así se dice, <laughs> construction office. And uh, when I was a teenager, um, in a in a in a company and I'm going to visit Chela, Panajachel and Chocomil I think but are three places in this vacation vac yes, next week to, <laughs> yes um, from from Thursday to Sunday and the last one was what's your first job? Oh, 
Oh. ¿Cómo sería? What was your first job? Oh. En pasado. My first job was in... I am sales from motorcycle, parts of motorcycle, and other things. For example, uh, I repair the computers in my job. Uh, I I did I did este catalog for the machines machines catalog sería correct yeah and ¿cómo sería? I I went to for Santa Rosa. ¿Cómo es? Iba a Santa Rosa en bus. Uh -huh. I went. I went eh, to Santa Rosa. On bus. En bus for one year. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And where do you live, Carla? I live in San Miguel. Mm, so it took around how many hours? One? In bus, yes, one hour, but sometimes uh, 40, 40 minutes. In, in car, 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, all right. It's also all right. Okay. <laughs> but I leave it because it's not my. Uh, my career uh -huh. <laughs> because I started computer okay sales sales once well, la ventas no tenían que ver con la <laughs> uh -huh. okay sales uh, no sé cómo se diría que no tienen nada o sea mi trabajo no tenía que ver con lo que estudiaba Okay, so um, probably um, the job that I had was not related to what I was studying. So the job that I had, dígalo. the job that I have, that I had, had, perdón, <laughs> that uh -huh. I had, yes, was not related was not related to what I was studying. To what I was studying. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. And you, Kenya? My first job was as an auditor, a tax auditor, and it was really hard because um, I had to visit the clients to different cities and I had I had to to um give yeah. Pablo my god okay let me see um okay um okay I'm going to move you okay Okay, thank you. The job was very difficult. That's all. Okay. Okay. Hello, Pablo. Yes, Pablo is here. <laughs> Ask the three questions to Pablo, okay? Hello. Hello. The first. <laughs> uh, which sure. websites do you use the most? Or what do you like most about them? Um, 
I use with the um in in website uh, your reparo. This website is um, the technical support. It's cool. <laughs> I, I am in contact with the technical who told me solving some problem and I also help them with some problem that they cannot solve them. Where would you like to go on your next holiday? Everywhere. <laughs> nah, uh, in my next vacation, uh, I would like to go to Cancun. Okay. Excellent. Mexico. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going On to vacation. A... <laughs> okay. Only rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next question. What I was? I don't have vacation the next week. <laughs> really? <laughs> you won't have? No. Really? No. Oh my Where God. <laughs> All right. Okay. And you, Carla, are you, you're going to work. And you, Carla? I think, yes, uh, seems Monday. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. From Monday, you're going to have vacation till mm -hmm. uh, Monday, 10th. Mm hmm. So the whole week, seven days. Yes, because um, other months mm -hmm. uh, we have many, many activities. Activities, and because my personal is a semana. That's why they give me the week, the whole week, or the complete uh -huh. week. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Okay. And the, last, the last question. What was your first job, Pablo? Um, my first job, uh, it was a candy factory. And I have um, 10 years old. Oh my God, you, you actually were a kid. Yes. 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 My job. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's move and let's go to the class. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. Yes. Okay, guys, let's continue with today's class. And well, let me ask you, okay, let me ask some of you, let me see. Um, Tatiana, are you there? Tatiana Ivon? She's not there. Um, okay, so let me see, Kenya Elizabeth? Yes, teacher. Yes, Kenya. Where would you like to go on your next holiday? Uh, I'm going to go to Guatemala because I bought a ticket, but I'm going to go to buy bus with a tourist company. Right. I'm going to go to Chela, Panajachel, and Chocomil. Excellent. Okay, so you are going to enjoy those vacations, Kenya. Thank you, teacher.
Yes, perfect. All right. So, guys, let's move, okay? And let's start with the book. Uh, Jonathan, please be the kitchen manager. And Nelly, please be Mary. Okay, where's Mary? Mario? He is late for, for his shift. Mario, goodness, I got a call that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry, he should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. We have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay, thank you. All right, let me ask you this question that we have right here. Okay, how are employees monitored at your company? How are employees monitored at your company, guys? Mm -hmm. What kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Um, in my company, we, we write a um, report. Yes. And okay. we have a um, biometric, uh, biometric check. Okay. When I start to work and when we finish. Exactly. All right. Perfect. Yes, I think that most of you do that, right? Yes, I think that yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, guys, what you can notice right here is that we have this type of structure. Look at this. I should have told, he should have called. I could have found, yes? Those are the structures that we are going to cover today. And how do we call this type of structures? What is this? Those are modal verbs in the past, okay? So let's see. Those are called perfect modals or verbos modales en el pasado. We have modal verbs in present, yeah? And we also have modal verbs in past, okay? So now we use perfect modals to express regret or remorse about past actions, okay? So arrepentimiento, regret. Remorse, remordimiento. About past actions. Okay, cosas que hicimos en el pasado. Yeah. So now, we use the structure should have plus the past participle to talk about regrets. Okay, para hablar de arrepentimientos. For example, I should have sent the report sooner. Yo debí haber mandado el reporte uh -huh, sooner. Yeah. Más pronto, más rápido. Yeah. I shouldn't, negative. I shouldn't have asked her to carry those boxes. Yo no debí haber, ¿ya? Yo no debí haberle preguntado a ella, ¿ya? O pedido en este caso, no debí haber, eh, no le debí haber pedido que cargara esas cajas. ¿Ya? No debí haber hecho eso. Uh -huh. Debí haber y no debí haber. Plus the verb in past participle. Y el verbo va en pasado participio, guys. Pasado participio. 
Yeah. And then look at this. We have probably a more complex structure. La estructura que vamos a ver es un poco más compleja. Okay. So we have could and would. All right. So could and would have are often used with if plus had plus past participle. And okay, look at this. If I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. And what are we saying? ¿Qué estamos diciendo con esta idea? If I had known you were sick, si yo hubiese, si yo hubiese sabido, yeah, que tú estabas enfermo, yo podría haber conseguido a un sustituto. Uh -huh. The manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. El gerente podría haber arreglado tu horario si tú se lo hubieses mencionado. Yeah. You see? And then we have, I would have come to work if I had received the schedule on time. Mm -hmm. I would have come. This is like saying, yo hubiese venido a trabajar si yo hubiese o hubiera sabido o recibido en ese caso mi horario a tiempo. Ok. So, as you can see, guys, it's about past. Todo es acerca del pasado. Ok. But the structures are more complex. Las estructuras son un poco más complejas. ¿Mm? Yeah. Now, in order for you, okay, in order for you to have an idea, yes, para que vayamos comprendiendo un poquito mejor este tema, yes, we are going to cover the structures. How do we use could have Moral verb in the past. ¿Cómo lo utilizamos? How do we use it? We use it when something was a possibility, but you didn't do it. For example, okay? And you have the structure. If plus subject plus have plus verb in past participle plus complement. Coma, subject, could have, verb in past participle plus complement. Esa es la estructura para que se le haga más fácil realizar una oración. Okay. So, the example is, if I had known about the meeting, I could have attended. Yeah. So, si yo hubiese sabido acerca de la reunión, yo podría haber asistido. Another example in Spanish would be, 
si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo. Si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo. ¿Cómo sería esa idea utilizando moral verb in the past? ¿Cómo sería esa idea? Si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo. Siguiendo la estructura. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me ask somebody. Tatiana, how would you say, si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo? If you have. Uh -huh. Verb in past participle. Mm. I don't know, teacher. Ok. ¿Cómo se dice, Tatiana, el verbo decir en inglés? Mm, I don't... No lo sé. I don't okay. know. Ok. So, somebody else, how do you say decir en inglés? Say. Say, say or... Tell me. Or tell. tell. Okay. Say or tell. Los verbos, guys. Los verbos. Tenemos que estudiar los verbos. Okay. So, if I had known, in this case, ese es el participio de, ¿de qué es el participio este, guys? De saber. ¿Y cuál es el presente de este verbo? No. No. ¿Y cuál es el pasado? New. New. Muy bien. Ok. So, si tú me lo hubieses dicho, yo podría haber hecho algo. Ahora, Tatiana, que ya sabemos que el, el pasado participio de tell es. Told. Told. Ok. Told. Muy bien. Ahora ya sabemos que es told. Ok. Ahora, Tatiana, ¿cómo sería entonces la primera oración? Y va bien usted. Continúe. So, if. If you, if you have told. Told me. Uh, told me. If you have told me. About it. About it. Uh -huh. I. I could. Uh -huh. uh, I could, I could have hecho, eh, ajá. hecho. How do you say hacer? Me. Um, not exactly. Mm. El otro verbo que, que utilizamos para hacer, Tatiana. Mm. No recuerdo. Ok, Tatiana, ¿cómo usted dice hacer tareas? ¿Cómo dice usted yo hago tareas? I... ¿No? No. Ok. So, hacer tareas se dice do... Homework. Okay. 
Entonces el verbo hacer es do. Do. Muy bien. ¿Y cuál es el pasado participio de do? Don. Don. Ok. All right. So, if you have told me about it, I could have. I could have done. Done something. Ok. Bye. Very good, Tatiana. Ok, muy bien. Diana, but ok. ¿Cómo se dice decir en inglés? No. Tell or say. Uh -huh. Ok. All right. Tatiana, how do you say hacer? Do. Do. Ok, perfect. All right. Very good. Ok, guys. So now let's continue. Ok. So, negatives. Ok, we also have negatives. With the negatives, we have the follow structure. Ok. If subject hadn't, ok, which is negative, verb in past participle, plus complement, comma, subject, wouldn't have, verb in past participle, plus complement. And we have, if I hadn't known about the meeting, I couldn't have attended. ¿Qué estamos diciendo? Si yo, si yo, este if es si, si yo, no hubiese, porque es negativo, si yo no hubiese o no hubiera, depende cómo usted lo quiera interpretar, ¿ok? Si yo no hubiese sabido acerca de la reunión, no podría haber asistido. Este couldn't have significa no podría haber. Y el could have significa podría haber. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. What questions do you have? ¿Qué preguntas tienen? ¿Qué dudas tienen? Hasta aquí. ¿Qué preguntas tenemos? ¿Qué dudas tenemos? Ok. If not... I'm going to give you an example in Spanish and I need you to give me that, that example in English, okay? So, si tú no hubieses ido, no podrías haber comido esa deliciosa comida. Si tú no hubieses ido, no podrías haber comido esa deliciosa comida. ¿Cómo lo diría? If you hadn't went. Past participle of went. The another part. <laughs> ¿Cuál era? Okay, all right. So, si tú no hubieses ido, no podrías haber comido esa deliciosa comida. Uh, if you hadn't when uh -huh. uh, you couldn't to eat 
the delicious food. Okay. So, so, okay. So, so. Porque los verbos no están correctos. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Have, All right. Uh, have in the second part. Yes. Uh -huh. You could have, have it. Eight. Pa past participle. Pasado participle. Okay. Eating. Uh, eating. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Eating. All right. So now, guys, how do you say, guys, um, which is the past participle of go? Gone. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay. I know that is difficult. I know that it's difficult, but you are learning, okay? And you need to study the verbs, los verbs, okay? Verbs. All right, guys. What questions do you have? Tienen dudas, tienen preguntas acerca de could have? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, so let's do something, all right? So I need you to create, I need you to create three sentences. Three sentences with could have. It could be positive or it could be negative. You decide, okay? Yes, three sentences. Los voy a mandar a diferentes salones para que lo puedan hacer con su compañero y apoyarse entre ustedes. Si tienen preguntas, Ask, okay? If not, try. Yes, okay? Si no, trate, okay? Y verifique los verbos, okay? Verbs, yeah? So right now I'm going to take the attendance, okay? Eh, Carlos Alberto Castro Santana. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Guerrero. Present. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Daisy. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Jorge Antonio. No, okay. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you. Karen Janet Granados Orellana. Karen? No, Karen is not here. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenya Elizabeth Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marian Scarlett Rodriguez. Marian Scarlett. Marina Jensi Sandoval. Present. Thank you. Um, Mauricio Antonio Velasquez. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibeth Andrade. Present. Thank you. Norma Patricia. Norma, Patricia de Arrué. Pablo Adalberto Abre. Present. Thank you. Tatiana Ivonne Torres. Present. Thank you. Um, let me see. Okay. Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Present. Thank you. And Jonathan Roberto García. Present. All right. Um, so, guys, what I'm going to do right now, let me see. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I sent this to you. Let me see. I don't remember, okay? If I sent the list of verbs, I, I, I'm not sure, okay, if I send it to your team, okay? Um, but I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to send the list of verbs. Yeah, I'm going to send two lists, okay? Le voy a mandar dos listas de verbos, los regulares y los irregulares, yeah? 
So, si usted no sabe un verbo, váyase a esa lista que ahí lo va a encontrar. Lo voy a mandar al grupo de WhatsApp para que los tengan a la mano. Ok. Um, ok. Okay, so do you have any question? Tatiana and Nelly? Hi, teacher. Hello, do you have any question about what you are going to do? No, teacher. Sale estudiar los verbos. No, I mean, what? Okay, so, but do you have any question about the things that you are going to do right no. now? No? No. no. Remember that you need to create three sentences. Yes. Okay. All right. Hadn't won the lottery. You couldn't vote your house. If you hadn't. If you hadn't. Uh, won the lottery. Won the lottery. You couldn't. Couldn't. Both. Couldn't have your house. Okay. Um. Just remember that couldn't have. Couldn't have, yes. Couldn't have both in the second, yeah. Very good. Okay. Okay, do you have any question, guys, about the, um, the sentences that you are going to create? Hello, Miss. No. Hello. For no? the moment. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay. Working in that. All right. This is the this is the example. Okay. The truck. You are alone again, Papa. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me move you. Okay, let me move. You. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We could. Could have. We could have. Eh, nosotros hubiéramos eh, ganado. We could have Sería win. win. No, win, creo. Pero ver, ver, ah, es que ha pasado participio. Win. Sí, no. No. Es un buen We could have. No sé si es. Eh, won, parece, crees. Ah, won. sí, sí. Very good. We could have won. Vaya. No, bueno, así, así que ganamos lo que perdíamos. Si te la te, diría que ganamos. Si tuviera jugado ahora, perdíamos. Cuidado. <risa> ánimo. Qué ánimo. Vaya, creo que eso está bien. Ahora, eh. Hola, hola, Hoy hagamos una negativa. If eh, he hadn't slept. 
I, entonces, if, ahí como llamamos la estructura, no sé, y ella, déjame la, had, had, si ella no hubiera, mmm, algún verbo así, pongamos cualquier verbo y después inventamos. Hola. Slep, slep. Ah, con, ah, sí, si sí, tú no hubieras dormido demasiado, no, no sé. Es como puede ser slep. Si tú no hubieras oh, slep es Slep de dormir. all day podría ser. Si tú no hubieras slep. dormido. Slep no all day. Ajá. O oh, que ver In English. In English? Yes. Okay. Tell, tell us. If you haven't go to the seminar. Have or haven't? Haven't. Have. If you have. Haven't. 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 In negative. Okay. If you hadn't. Gone to the seminar. Going to the seminar, yeah. You call not how participate in dynamic. In dynamic. Dynamic. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. It's correct. And why? Is correct this this these sentences that dynamic. you <laughs> dynamic okay white the white it's correct it's correct this or see let's see if you hadn't gone to the Mm, if you hadn't gone to the, you can say seminar without e. Yeah, if you hadn't gone to the to the seminar, I mean without e, without seminar without e. Okay. The last e. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. The seminar, or you can also say webinar. Okay. okay. Yes, you couldn't have you couldn't have participated in in the dynamic. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, Wendy. Are you there? Okay. Okay. Estoy... <laughs> If you, if you, uh, mm -hmm. if you, uh, mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. llevando, mm -hmm. oh, como, for her exam, como se dice, ajá, como aprobarla, approve, aprobar el examen. No sé, cómo, no sé cómo dice en inglés. Entonces ya no se está diciendo que approve. Approved. Uh -huh. Approved. Yes. Exam. Así. Approved. Double P. Oh. Uh, approved. Yes. Approved. Así Very good. Hagamos okay. la otra positiva. So. Uh, well, what are good? Pase. Sí. Sí. Nice. I, 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 Está bien, es we. If we had eh, lunch. 
si nosotros hubiéramos eh, si nosotros hubiéramos tiene que ser este ajá sí ir Had... Es un verbo, ajá, si se refiere a eso. Eren. Eren Lounge. No, Eren, Eren Lounge, así en su momento jugamos. Si nosotros hubiéramos como. Mm. Estuviéramos como si nosotros, si nosotros, si hubiéramos comido. No tuviéramos eh, hambre. Ajá, correcto, algo así. Comido la Se podría, we couldn't have hungry, no. Mm, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. How do you say in English? We if we had eaten lunch, I uh, we we don't uh, yeah. Quiero ver. Sería. We could have. We, we could have hungry. Mm, you can say we or we couldn't have. We couldn't, we have. couldn't have. Y el, el pasado participio de del verbo to be. Entonces, ¿cuál es el pasado participio del verbo to be? Wing, wing. No, no, este. No. este De was, uh, no, no, being, being, no. Ajá, muy bien. Been, yes. Being hungry. Correct. Ajá. Hungry. Ajá. Pero es de. Ahí, estrella. Ok. Bye. Muy bien. Ok. Do you have questions? ¿Tiene preguntas, dudas? Eh, este del cool, pensé que no se podía combinar positivo con negativo, pero sí se puede. Sí, sí se puede. Se puede combinar positivo con negativo, negativo y negativo, positivo, positivo. Yes. Depende de su idea. Y de los verbos siempre sí, en sí, sí, pasado. Sí, correcto. Eh, siempre, toda la vida en pasado participio. Para que la idea se exprese como la, como la decimos, ¿verdad? If you had mm -hmm. played today, we could have won. Podríamos haber ganado. Mm -hmm. Yes. O pudimos haber ganado. Ajá. Okay. okay. Bye. Okay, muy bien. Let's see. Let's close all the rooms and let's go back to the main one, okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, let me see. Okay. So let's continue, guys. Let's continue. Um, Emerson, can we hear your uh, sentences? Okay, miss. Yeah. Uh, if you hadn't learned English, you couldn't have uh, obtained this job. Perfect. Number two. If you hadn't shown a report earlier, we couldn't have lost the audit. Okay, yes, very good. Next. If she has said about the problem with her car, I couldn't have helped it before. Okay, if she had, had, she had so yes. Had. Yes, um, very good. Yeah, okay, thank you, Emerson. I think that that is a good uh, observation, okay? So we use have for all the subjects, for 
I, you, we, they, he, she, and it. Always have. Yeah, always, always, always. Very good. Nelly, can you please share your examples? Yes. Um, if you had uh, working early, you could have arrived on time. Okay. If I hadn't done homework, I couldn't have taken a good nap. If you had done exercise, you couldn't have been healthy. Very good. Jonathan? Okay. Uh, if we had studied enough, we could have passed the exam. Perfect. Yes, that's it. Just one. All right. Uh, okay. okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, next, if you hadn't gone to the seminar, we had participated or participated in the dynamic. Participated was correct. <laughs> okay. And the last one. Uh, I don't know if it's correct, but uh, if you had me gone, if you had me gone, si tú me hubiera, no, pues. si tú me hubiera dejado ir, no, if you had me gone shopping to the supermarket, no, we had both for dinner. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Um Jonathan, the first idea, which is uh, I mean, which is the first idea? Okay. Si si tú hubieses ido al supermercado, ¿no? No, si tú me hubieras llevado de compras al supermercado. Got it. Okay. If you had taken me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or okay. you can say if we or if you um or if we had gone shopping. Okay. Yeah. We could have and you mentioned uh, the other idea. Okay. Okay. Okay, I get it. Perfect. All Thank right, you. very good. Okay, very good. All right, guys. So now let's move to should have. And this one is going to be the last one for today, okay? So should have. This one is easier than the previous one. Why? Because should have means debí haber. Yeah? So, and we we, uh, we use this one whenever we are going to, or when, when we did something that was a good idea, or whenever we did something as an obligation, or whenever someone was obligating us to do something, but we didn't do it. You will see it's so simple. This one is really easy, okay? We always have the same structure. Look at this. If I had or any other subject, right? Puede poner otro sujeto, no solamente I. So if I had seen it, past participle, si yo lo hubiese visto, yeah, I should have called you. Yo debería haberte llamado. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, the other one in negative, if you hadn't seen it, right? If you hadn't seen it. So in this case, si tú no lo hubieses 
o no lo hubieras visto, yeah, you shouldn't have told me. No, me deberías haber dicho. Uh -huh. Shouldn't have or should have. Debía haber, no debía haber. For example, um, let's see. Let's see one idea. Si yo, okay, or let's use another pronoun, okay. Si ellos, si ellos hubiesen, si ellos. Um, si ellos hubiesen querido, si ellos hubiesen querido, ellos no deberían haber dicho eso. Si ellos hubiesen querido, no deberían de haber dicho eso. Uh -huh. Si ellos hubiesen querido. So, if they uh -huh. wanted. If, if they had wanted. Uh -huh. No deberían haber dicho eso. They. They told them. Shouldn't have. Told that. Told that or said that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, another one. Um, let's see. Now related to your job, okay? Something related to your job. All right. So, see. Ellos, si ellos no hubieran mandado el reporte, si ellos no hubieran mandado el reporte, nosotros deberíamos haberlo hecho. Si ellos no hubieran mandado el reporte, nosotros deberíamos haberlo hecho. ¿Let's see? If they hadn't sent the report, we should have sent it. Sent it. Perfect. Uh -huh. Very good. You see, this one is easy than the um than the other one, right? It's easier. It is a little bit, yeah. All right. So now things that I need to mention. Okay. Um, this one, uh, this tip is when it comes to grammar, guys. Okay. This is about grammar. So every time that you start your sentence with if, si usted se fija, en esas oraciones tenemos una coma. Pero ¿por qué? ¿Por qué tenemos una coma? Because the rule says, okay, la regla dice, para utilizar ese tipo de estructuras, that every time that you use if, yeah, siempre que utilicemos if at the beginning of the sentence, al principio de una oración, guys, siempre que usted utilice if y utilice dos oraciones completas, porque si se fija, esta es una oración completa y esta es otra oración completa. Son dos oraciones que llevamos ahí. Vamos a agregar una coma para separar las dos ideas. Uh -huh. That is a rule. Es una regla. Si usted no le pone esa coma, entonces la oración estaría incorrecta. Solamente por, el, por la coma. Y es solamente por la coma la oración estaría incorrecta. ¿Ya? Yeah? So this is uh, about grammar. Eso ya es más que todo de escritura. Okay.
So, recuerde, siempre que utilice if al principio en la oración, vamos a poner coma. Pero ahora, ¿qué sucede entonces cuando nosotros eh, utilizamos, eh, no utilizamos if al principio? ¿Qué sucede cuando no lo utilizamos? Porque, look at this. Fíjense en la, acá en esta y en esta, ok? So, take a look at this one and at this one. If es en medio, no es al principio. Fíjense. Ok. So, y no tenemos coma. Porque la regla dice que si utilizamos el if en la segunda oración, o sea, en la segunda oración, no al principio, entonces la coma no es necesaria. Pero si usted utiliza if, fíjese bien aquí, sí tenemos coma. Y en las otras no tenemos porque el if va en la segunda oración. So, teacher, entonces le puedo dar vuelta a la oración. Puedo decir, I could have attended if I had known about the meeting. Yes. Puede switch the sentence. Puede empezar nada más con eh, I could have attended if I had known about the meeting. O puede decir if I had known about the meeting, I could have attended. And it's the same idea. Y es la misma idea. Es la misma idea nada más que está utilizando estructuras distintas. ¿Ya? Yeah? Yes, Jonathan. In this case, if if I switch the order, I need to put uh, the comma always. No, in this case, if you switch the order, no, no comma is needed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. No comma is needed if you switch it. Yeah. But you can switch all of them. Todas las pueden cambiar. But when it comes to grammar, ya cuando se trata de gramática, obviamente cuando uno lo habla, la coma no es notoria porque no decimos if I had seen it, coma, I should have called you. No decimos así. La idea cuando hablamos decimos if I had seen it, I should have called you. Right? Pero cuando lo escribimos, sí, es importante los signos de puntuación. Entonces podemos eh, poner if I had seen it, I should have called you or I should have called you if I had seen it, sin la coma, porque estamos utilizando if en el medio, en la segunda oración. Ok. Do you have any other doubt? Any other doubt or question that you may have? No. Okay. So let's move. And right now, what we are going to do, okay? Well, tomorrow we are going to continue um, with this topic because we still need to cover would have. Okay. We still need to cover that one. But right now, we are going to stop with grammar right here. And we are going to move to one of the quizzes that we have. And the quiz is about. A pronunciation. Okay, so let me get it for you if you are not on the spreadsheet. Um, let me try to get the link. Give me one second. Yeah. Um, so guys, the, the quiz is about pronunciation. Okay, it's about the simple past. Okay, because I think that you, you already forgot about simple past and past participle. You shouldn't forget about that, okay? So, the e, the ending sounds, yeah? That is a quiz about verbs in past. The pronunciation, ed. Let's see if you remember, okay, about that. So, please take that exam, okay? And let me know once you are done and we are going to move to listening, okay? Ready, miss. Thank you. All right. You may start, guys.
Okay, guys. So I got some of you. Okay, I'm still missing some. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you just two more minutes, okay, for the ones that have not finished, and then we're going to move to the listening, okay? All right, so let's move to the listening, okay? Let's move to the listening. And um, for the listening, guys, we have two, okay? We have two listenings. We are going to take the first one and the link is the following. That one and, um, okay, and, that, and then listen, okay? Listen. Make sure, guys, um, copy and paste the code, okay? Copy y pegue el código, porque eh, en ocasiones por eso no, no lo deja entrar por el código. ¿Ok? Todo tiene que ser letra mayúscula, recuerden. ¿Ok? So here we go, guys. Okay, let me let me um, play the recording. Let me share the sound. Okay. So here we go. Yes, I always cook. I often cook with my roommate. I... Oh, Hannah, tell me, um, do you cook much? All right, give me one second. I'm going to replay it, okay? So, Hannah, tell me, um, do you cook much? Yes, I always cook. I often cook with my roommate, and we always make Chinese or Japanese food. How about you? Well, um... I don't really cook that often because I'm really busy during the week. So um, I'll just, I always get something in, in a shop and eat that. But uh, during the weekends, um, I, I do, I always cook during the weekends because I really like making food. So that's what I do. So do you ever eat out? Um, only occasionally because um, 
I'm really busy during the week and I prefer cooking during the weekend. So um, not really often. I don't go out really often to eat. But whenever I'm tired and or I don't have time to cook during the weekend, I go and eat out with a friend. So how about you? Uh, well, I always cook. So I normally go and eat out on the weekends with my friends or family. So do you ever buy takeaway? No, I never. Normally when I go out to eat, I like to sit and enjoy my food. How about you? Well, that's really nice. Um, of course, I, I do like to sit and enjoy my food, but I have to admit that occasionally I have to buy takeaway, especially when I'm coming late from work and I'm driving. Um, I'm so hungry that... Okay, guys, which is... Let me see. Yeah, I got a message from uh, Jonathan, I think. Yeah, no, that one is not the one that we're taking. Okay, give me one second. Well, thank you, Jonathan. All right. Let me see. This is the one that is on the platform. Okay. Um so close that one guys, close that one. That one no is not the one that we are going to take. So close it. Um and we are going to take this one. That one. Yes, that one is the correct one. And the same thing, okay? So the code is listening, okay? Let me make sure that one is. Yes, okay. So now, yes, guys. Mm, okay. All right, so here we go. I'm going to play this one three times, okay? Three times. Hello, 24th Precinct. Officer Jones speaking. Help! Yeah, uh, it was wild. I mean, really bizarre. Calm down, sir. Now, what do you want to report? Well, I'd like to report a UFO sighting. A what? What do you mean, what? An unidentified flying object. Wait, tell me exactly what you saw. Well, I was driving home from a party about three hours ago, so it was about 2 a.m. when I saw this bright light overhead. Okay, and then what happened? Oh, man. Well, it was out of this world. I stopped to watch the light when it disappeared behind a hill about a kilometer ahead of me. All right, then what? Well, I got back in my car and I started driving toward where the UFO landed. Now, how do you know it was a UFO? Perhaps you only saw the lights of an airplane. No. Or the headlights of an approaching car. No. Things like that happen, you know. Well, if it was that, how do you explain the beast? What do you mean, the beast? Okay, I kept driving for about five minutes when all of a sudden this giant hairy creature jumped out in front of my car. Oh, yeah? Then what? Well, then the beast picked up the front of my car and said... Get out of the car. I'm taking you to my master. Something like that. Wow. A hairy alien who can speak English. Come on. 
I'm not making this up, if that's what you're suggesting. Then, when I didn't get out of my car, the beast opened the car door, carried me on his shoulders to this round-shaped flying saucer, and, well, that's when I woke up alongside the road. The beast must have knocked me out and left me there. Well, that's the best story I've heard all night, sir. Now, have you been taking any medication, drugs, or alcohol in the last 24 hours? You mentioned you went to a party. What? Well, I did have a few beers, but I'm telling the truth. Okay, okay. We have a great therapist that deals with these kind of cases. I'm not crazy. Well, we'll look into your story. Thank you. Okay. The second time. Hello, 24th Precinct. Officer Jones speaking. Help! Yeah, uh, it was wild. I mean, really bizarre. Calm down, sir. Now, what do you want to report? Well, I'd like to report a UFO sighting. A what? What do you mean, what? An unidentified flying object. Wait, tell me exactly what you saw. Well, I was driving home from a party about three hours ago, so it was about 2 a.m., when I saw this bright light overhead. Okay, and then what happened? Oh, man. Well, it was out of this world. I stopped to watch the light when it disappeared behind a hill about a kilometer ahead of me. All right, then what? Well, I got back in my car and I started driving toward where the UFO landed. Now, how do you know it was a UFO? Perhaps you only saw the lights of an airplane. No. Or the headlights of an approaching car. No. Things like that happen, you know. Well, if it was that, how do you explain the beast? What do you mean, the beast? Okay, I kept driving for about five minutes when all of a sudden this giant hairy creature jumped out in front of my car. Oh, yeah? Then what? Well, then the beast picked up the front of my car and said... Get out of the car. I'm taking you to my master. Something like that. Wow. A hairy alien who can speak English. Come on. I'm not making this up, if that's what you're suggesting. Then, when I didn't get out of my car, the beast opened the car door, carried me on his shoulders to this round-shaped flying saucer, and, well, that's when I woke up alongside the road. The beast must have knocked me out and left me there. Well, that's the best story I've heard all night, sir. Now, have you been taking any medication, drugs, or alcohol in the last 24 hours? You mentioned you went to a party. What? Well, I did have a few beers, but I'm telling the truth. Okay, okay. We have a great therapist that deals with these kind of cases. I'm not crazy. Well, we'll look into your story. Thank you. All right, guys. Do you, do you need me to play one more time? Or no? Yes, miss. Please. Yes, okay. Hello, 24th Precinct. Officer Jones speaking. Help! Yeah, uh, it was wild. I mean, really bizarre. Calm down, sir. Now, what do you want to report? Well, I'd like to report a UFO sighting. A what? What do you mean, what? An unidentified flying object. Wait, tell me exactly what you saw. Well, I was driving home from a party about three hours ago, so it was about 2 a.m. when I saw this bright light overhead. Okay, and then what happened? Oh, man. Well, it was out of this world. I stopped to watch the light when it disappeared behind a hill about a kilometer ahead of me. All right, then what? Well, I got back in my car and I started driving toward where the UFO landed. Now, how do you know it was a UFO? Perhaps you only saw the lights of an airplane. No. Or the headlights of an approaching car. No. Things like that happen, you know. Well, if it was that, how do you explain the beast? What do you mean, the beast? Okay, I kept driving for about five minutes when all of a sudden this giant hairy creature jumped out in front of my car. Oh, yeah? Then what? Well, then the beast picked up the front of my car and said... Get out of the car. I'm taking you to my master. Something like that. Wow. A hairy alien who can speak English. Come on. I'm not making this up, if that's what you're suggesting. Then, when I didn't get out of my car, the beast opened the car door, carried me on his shoulders to this round-shaped flying saucer, and, well, that's when I woke up alongside the road. 
The beast must have knocked me out and left me there. Well, that's the best story I've heard all night, sir. Now, have you been taking any medication, drugs, or alcohol in the last 24 hours? You mentioned you went to a party. What? Well, I did have a few beers, but I'm telling the truth. Okay, okay. We have a great therapist that deals with these kind of cases. I'm not crazy. Well, we'll look into your story. Thank you. Okay. So, submit your answers, guys. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay, I can see that some of you got uh, 100, okay. Um, all right, probably this one was kind of complex, right? This one was kind of complex because I can see that some of you got um, a low score, right? Let me see. Okay, all right guys, before we go, before we go, let me ask you, okay? What do you think about this, okay? Do you think that children should not have smartphones? Yes or no? Do you agree or disagree on that one? Uh -huh. Should children have smartphones or no? Uh -huh. No. No. Why no? Mm, because it's very stimulate for children. Okay. All right. So which is the best age for a kid to have a smartphone? I hear about 10 years. Okay. 12 years. 12 years. Well, only calls. Okay. Yes. Well, but nowadays, you know, there are many kids, right, with the smartphones. That is really common nowadays because we are in the technological era. Right? Or maybe for a, a few times. <laughs> exactly. Uh huh. And with parenting control, right? That is correct. All right, guys. So we're going to stop right here just because of the time. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you very much for connecting today. Uh, the only person that please stay with me is Tatiana. Okay? Then the other ones, you may go ahead and rest, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay? Thank you. Right. Night, night. teacher. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Good Bye. night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Yes, Tatiana. Okay. Hello. Hi, Tatiana. How are you, Tatiana? How do you feel? I'm tired. <laughs> You're tired? Yes. Okay. Yes, I imagine, Tatiana. I think that you have had a really difficult day, right? Yes. Okay, Tatiana. Um, all week. I imagine. I imagine. Okay. So, Tatiana, let me ask you something, okay? Uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions because this one is the feedback time and I would like to know your opinion, okay? Quiero uh, hacerle preguntas porque quiero saber cómo se siente con las clases, qué le ha parecido hasta el momento nuestro curso de uh, intermedio 1. Um, quisiera saber también su, sus estudios en el idioma inglés. Um, ¿Cómo ha sido su proceso de aprendizaje? Quiero saber cómo ha sido su proceso de aprendizaje del idioma inglés. Eh, solamente con ustedes empecé, comencé con, con el principiante. Okay. Eh, sí, eh, me cuesta bastante el idioma, horrible. Que es la materia que, que no me gusta, pero, pero quiero aprender. Ok. Eh, Trato de esforzarme, pero me cuesta un montón. Ok. Muy bien. Um, ok, Tatiana. Y bueno, en los módulos anteriores ha venido practicando, ha venido haciendo eh, diferentes actividades dentro y fuera de la clase para mejorar. 
sí, eh, fíjense que eh, casi que casi que solo va dentro de la clase por el tiempo que tengo. Eh, porque voy a trabajar, después voy al gimnasio, después vengo a la clase. Entonces, eh, me cuesta bastante. Casi no tengo tiempo. Eh, trato de... de, de de este de por lo menos estar en las clases a, a pesar de que estoy cansada eh, pero eh, voy a dedicarle un poquito más de tiempo aunque sea aunque sea media hora cada día para aprenderme por lo menos los verbos eh, cuando estoy nerviosa se me olvida todo este y eso no y me parece bien su técnica de hacernos eh, exámenes porque nos autoevaluamos nosotros ah, eh, vemos que, que son las que son este, las cosas que más se nos dificultan bien Tatiana eh, exacto como usted pues lo ha mencionado eh, básicamente pues eh, el módulo intermedio 1 verdad es eh, podríamos decirle como una etapa nueva, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué? Porque ustedes están entrando al intermedio, donde en el intermedio, si ya se dio cuenta, los temas son un poquito más complejos, ¿verdad? Ya pues nos despegamos del verbo to be, del ING, del presente simple, ya nos despegamos de ese tipo de, de temas y nos adaptamos a otros más complejos, sin embargo, que nos ayudan a expresar muchas ideas que, eh, debemos de saber cómo expresarlas y así mediante vayamos avanzando los módulos se van haciendo un poco más complejos entonces este módulo intermedio es para que ustedes se puedan adaptar a lo que viene después que sería intermedio 2 el intermedio 2 van a ser temas súper distintos verdad y tal vez un poco más complejos pero lo que queremos nosotros es que en este módulo intermedio ustedes pierdan el miedo ¿verdad? Pierdan la pena, pierdan el, esa zona de confort que en ocasiones venimos, ¿verdad? Desde antes con esa as, comodidad tal vez y para que ustedes empiecen a practicar más. ¿Por qué? Porque en realidad el idioma si no se practica, usted puede aprender gramática, usted puede aprender vocabulario, puede aprender una palabra ahora, pero ¿qué sucede si al final usted se tiene que expresar con frases largas, completas. Entonces, eh, Tatiana, el módulo pues ha sido diseñado para que ustedes puedan mejorar, ¿verdad? Y hacerlos pues que salgan de su zona de confort. Ese es el propósito, aunque a veces es difícil. Es difícil porque tal vez nos da pena o nos da miedo, ¿verdad? El poder equivocarnos, pero eso es algo normal. En el proceso de aprendizaje, uno pues se equivoca, ¿verdad? Uno comete errores, eh, uno pronuncia algo eh, súper mal, ¿verdad? Pero para eso está el docente, para poder corregirla y para poder eh, hacer el proceso de aprendizaje un poco más liviano, ¿ok? Um, bueno, me parece pues muy bien que a usted le parezca los exámenes que estamos haciendo porque el propósito también es ese, que se autoevalúen y digan, ok, tengo que mejorar en esto, ok, estoy en ese nivel, sin embargo, tengo que pulirme en esta área porque estoy entrando a un nivel intermedio y eso quiere decir que también mi vocabulario, mis ideas tienen que ser acorde al nivel donde estoy. Ok, entonces eh, Tatiana, mi consejo es que estudie en su tiempo libre. Si usted va al gimnasio y si usted es pues de las personas que le gusta escuchar música y se lleva sus audífonos, llévese eh, cosas y audios en inglés. Eh, si tiene Spotify, póngalo en inglés, ponga eh, audios en inglés y le van a salir historias ahí en inglés. Si tiene YouTube, entonces mejor eh, use YouTube y escuche música en inglés o descárguelas en inglés o, de, o descargue eh, cuentos en inglés. Todo lo que usted considere que le puede servir en su tiempo que está en el gimnasio, también uh -huh. utilice ese tiempo para estar escuchando, 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 escuchando. Ya cuando usted venga a la clase, ya va a venir con un calentamiento porque ya empezó a escuchar el 
persona cuando está haciendo ejercicio. Entonces, es bien importante que busquemos como técnicas y métodos para que podamos nosotros también desarrollar, ¿verdad? Ese, um, el vocabulario, esa agilidad eh, mental que tenemos que tener para eh, poder expresar los pensamientos en inglés, ¿ok? Ahora, Tatiana, ¿qué le parece la dinámica de speaking cuando se mandan a los salones? ¿Qué le ha parecido esa dinámica? Eh, eh, si le soy sincera, eh, sí. casi que en los salones eh, siento que demasiado perdemos el tiempo en salones. Eh, en todos los módulos he visto siempre lo mismo. Uh -huh. eh, creo que nos alimentan más cuando ustedes están presentes, o sea, cuando estamos participando, eh, digamos, eh, usted nos hace preguntas, eh, contestamos eh, sobre el tema. Eh, para mí, eh, este, a mí me sirve más eso, porque a veces vamos a los salones y ya no puedo, y el que está conmigo peor, no eh, puede menos. Entonces, como que nos estancamos en, y perdemos tiempo en, en los salones. Ok, bien, Tatiana. Ah. Eh, en esto de, de los salones, eh, ha mencionado algo muy importante, ¿ok? Que es que eh, usted siente que se pierde el tiempo. ¿Por qué siente que se pierde el tiempo? En ocasiones porque tal vez estamos con alguien que sabe menos que nosotros, sin embargo, es ahí donde viene usted como estudiante y dice, teacher, me puede cambiar de salón porque yo necesito practicar con alguien que esté tal vez a mi nivel o pueda un poquito más que yo para que yo pueda practicar con esa persona. Tal vez eso hemos ido fallando en los módulos anteriores y por eso no hemos practicado lo suficiente para poder nosotros poder desenvolvernos de una manera mejor en este momento. Entonces, los salones, eh, Tatiana, se hacen con, la, eh, con el objetivo que ustedes practiquen y que se sientan en confianza, porque si se fija, cuando estamos en, en la sala principal, muy pocos participan. Entonces, eso de tenerlos en la sala principal da resultado en ciertos temas y en ciertos eh, uh -huh. ejercicios, ¿verdad?, sin embargo, ustedes también deben de practicar ustedes solitos y poder eh, ver el panorama como es la realidad, donde usted tiene que esforzarse usted, venir e investigar en línea. Ok, no sé cómo se dice esto, pero voy a investigarlo porque yo estoy practicando en ese momento para aprender. No es que usted ya tenga el conocimiento y solo lo vaya a decir. No, usted está con su compañero porque va a aprender. Entonces, tal vez el propósito de los salones no lo hemos visto como es en realidad, que es que ustedes también aprendan hablando y haciendo. Entonces, Tatiana, en este caso que usted me ha mencionado esto, voy a hacer lo posible por ponerla con personas que puedan un poquito más tal vez y que usted también salga de su zona de confort y pueda practicar y participar un poquito más para que usted sienta que está aprendiendo y que tal vez no estamos perdiendo el tiempo. Porque en realidad, en el, el speaking practice no lo hacemos con la finalidad de que usted pierde el tiempo, ¿sí? Lo hacemos con la finalidad que usted practique. Esa es la, la finalidad, ¿ok? Entonces voy a hacer ese cambio que voy a, a dejarme bien eh, con quién pues yo la coloco para que usted pues pueda practicar un poquito más. Ahora, eh, le pido también que usted me diga, teacher, mire, me puede mover de salón, ¿verdad? Teacher, puede eh, cambiar porque fíjese que no estamos practicando. ¿verdad? Entonces, porque eh, es bien importante pues que, que usted se sienta bien en las prácticas y que usted sienta que está aprendiendo, ¿ok? Eh, ahora, ¿con la plataforma ha tenido alguna dificultad, algún uh, inconveniente? No, eh, no he hecho las tareas, pero, pero ya me voy a poner en ello. Eh, no, fíjese que eh, me había costado hacer una porque solo era, no me acuerdo cuál era, pero solo era de poner la palabra y no la oración completa. Entonces ahí era que, pero usted creo que nos explicó un día y, y la logré hacer. 
pero pero no no es, es siento que con la plataforma no tengo problema ok muy bien Tatiana bien eh, bueno no sé si tiene algo más que agregar no muchas gracias no la verdad que gracias porque por la paciencia y de verdad por porque se ve que tiene vocación y, y, y nos ayuda la verdad con los temas que hay un par de, de temas un poco nuevos y, y sí, sí, sí se le comprende. Ok, bien Tatiana. Eh, bueno, eh, tal vez yo le quiero dar un pequeño feedback, ¿verdad? Eh, quisiera que participara un poquito más cuando estemos en la sala principal. Cuando yo pida voluntarios, eh, yo sé que usted me dice, teacher, voy en camino, teacher, eh, no puedo participar en este momento, pero cuando usted ya llegue a su casa, trate de ser de las primeras que participa cuando pedimos pues, el, el, la participación de, de algunos de ustedes, ¿ok? Para que usted también pueda mejorar en ese aspecto, ¿ok? Porque así cuando usted habla, yo la puedo corregir, ¿ok? Y eh, básicamente pues agradecerle también que siempre está presente, incluso si tal vez usted está en el camino, ¿verdad? Entonces la responsabilidad también se le agradezco, la, le agradezco bastante, que sea responsable y que también tenga una actitud buena para el aprendizaje, porque usted me dice, me cuesta, pero quiero aprender. Entonces siempre eh, básicamente... Lo cual la va a definir va a ser la actitud con la que usted está aprendiendo el idioma. ¿ok? Recuerde que el proceso de aprendizaje para unos es más fácil y para otros es un poco más difícil. Entonces, tratamos de poder eh, guiarlos a todos, ¿verdad? Entonces, si tiene usted dudas, preguntas, algo que usted no le quede claro, siempre pregunte, siempre dígame. Y si usted me dice, no, es que en la clase me da pena o me siento como que no, no, entonces mejor mándeme un mensaje y dígame, teacher, ¿me puede explicar esto? Y yo con mucho gusto le mando un audio, ¿ok? Y le digo, que okay, esto es así y así y así. Pero no se quede con la duda y no se quede con el me da pena o me da miedo, ¿ok? Siempre busque una solución, ¿ok? Ok, thank you. Ok, Tatiana, so, eso es básicamente lo que le tengo que decir, ¿verdad? Como feedback, muy bien, siga participando un poquito más, ¿ok? Y bueno, eh, básicamente, pues, eso sería todo. Cualquier duda, algo que me quiera comentar, algo que me quiera decir, no duden en escribirme, lo puede hacer al chat del grupo o lo puedes hacer a mi número de teléfono. ¿Ok? Sí. Ok, Tatiana, so, eso era todo. Y bueno, si no tiene nada más que agregar, vamos a dejar el feedback hasta aquí y la voy a ver el día de mañana. ¿Ok? Ok, okay good night. Duerma. Good night, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow.